Welcome to Scorched Death. This is going to be a general reading for Sinus Sagittarius, Sun, Moon and Ascendant. If you don't know what your Sun and Ascendant know what your sun sign is if you don't know what your moon and ascendant signs are have a look in the description box below there's a link down there that will help you um, thank you for all your messages your comments your likes your subscribes your donations everything it's greatly appreciated i can't begin to tell you how much it's appreciated um full disclosure i've actually already recorded this um but i was kind of in two minds about whether i was going to upload it or not so I decided to give myself the benefit of the doubt and re-record. So here we are. <clears throat> I hope you will. So I have three cards for Sagittarius, please, for February. What does Sagittarius need to know? Well, what does Sagittarius need to know for the month of February? Okay, first card is the Fool. Right there. This card of Aries, the Major Arcana. There. Card for Sagittarius, please. I've got the Nine of Wands. That's actually a Sagittarian card right there. Fire energy, like you. And what's coming up? of Virgo in the Major Arcana. The world dropped out there, the universe as it is in that deck. It's kind of endings of cycles. At the bottom of the deck we've got the Judgment card. We'll get some clarifiers and then we'll get on with the main meat of the reading. Uh, oh, I love riffling this deck so much. It's really satisfying. Mm, that'll do. Right. Spin that right, right around. I have two, two cards for the full. And one more card for the full. This one is the full here for Sagittarius. Nice cups. Okay. Present energy. Why is the nine of ones here for Sagittarius? I'm going to show you these because they're flipped. We've got the Queen of Pentacles, which is the Earth Queen there. And we've got the Wheel of Fortune, which is the card of Sagittarius. And I'll pop them back in though because they didn't didn't jump, they just flipped. Why is the Nine of Wands here, please? Ooh. The High Priestess. It's a card of Pisces, number two. Oh, and King of Swords. Interesting. That's quite conflicting energy right there, I would say. So many flippers, right. <clears throat> Just need two more and then we'll get on with this. Why is the Hermit card here, please? The Sagittarius. Let's go towards Sagittarius. Where's the Hermit here? Fucking hell. Right, behave. Why is the Hermit here? Judgment, that's the card of Scorpio, right there. The Tower and the Star have also flipped. They're cards of Scorpio and Aquarius, respectively. And one more for the Hermit, please. Why is the Hermit here? Four of Wands. That's fire energy. I think that's Leo, not uh, not Sagittarius. Right, let's get on with this because I have to go and pick my children up from school very soon. So, the first card that you've got in the recent past is the Fool. All right, 
card of Aries may or may not be important. But this is a card of a new start, right? It's the card of taking a leap of faith. I love this card. That dog there looks just like my dog. And if I was to just leap over a cavern, he would follow me as well. The important thing about this is that <clears throat> it's a card of perfect trust, right? The fool doesn't know where he's going. He just knows that he needs to go. And he takes this leap of faith off into the unknown, to uncharted territory, right? This is somewhere he's never been before. And he's going with very little baggage. That's an important thing too, right? So in your recent past, there's been a new start of some description. It's a wonderfully light card, this. A little rainbow at the bottom here. Right. It's clarified by these two cards here, which are the Two of Rings and the Knight of Cups. Now, the Rings is the Pentacles in the standard deck, right? Two of Rings, Knight of Cups. The Skulls are the vessels in this deck. The Two of Rings, or the Two of Pentacles, as it might be, usually depicts someone like juggling pentacles, right? And there's usually a great big, like, maelstrom behind them like the sea is all like this and there are ships in the background and and the person who's doing the juggling doesn't look very happy about it you know and because it's pentacles it can be resources and duties and responsibilities and all that kind of thing but actually it can be juggling anything and the idea from the card is that whatever it is whatever these pentacles resemble to you you know that you're juggling to try and keep up in the air. It's proving to be really difficult. It's really tricky. And there's a sense from the card that it's unsustainable, right? There's only so long you're gonna be able to keep these pentacles up in the air before you drop them. <coughs> but it's a slightly different depiction here. It's, it's two hands clasped together like this. And what's not clear is if it's two people clasping hands together or whether it's one person clasping the prayer. And the rings are here on the wrists. And there's an eye on the thumb too. see. This looks like it's shedding a tear. <sighs> Just reach it up into the sky. And whether it's one person or whether it's two people clasping hands, like the eye is looking out, it's looking elsewhere. And I think that that's important. It's like the focus is not on this anymore. And then we have the Knight of Cups. And the Knight of Cups usually is a card that actually slightly pisses me off because it's... The Knights, I, I find a little irksome anyway, as, as characters with archetypes. But the Knight of Cups particularly tends to be a bit of a triumph of style over substance, right? You know, he's, he's usually glammed up in his, you know, white arm, shining armour and... Yeah. <clears throat> it's got a white horse which is also bedecked with jewels and awesome things and he's moving very slowly holding this you know incredible cup and you're all supposed to be quite you know wowed with the offer but I don't buy it this depiction I find really quite interesting because in this deck the cups are skulls and I like that because it gives some, some real credibility to the notion that love is something very internal and it starts inside. You know, it's not, not externally observable often. What I find really interesting about this is that there's a horn above, which I would associate with communication right there, right? 
and it seems to be leaking into the skull, which is then leaking out of the eye sockets. It actually looks quite sad as a card. And so whatever the message of love is here that's, that's coming out of this horn, it's kind of dripping into an empty skull and it's not hitting anything on the way. It's just, just leaking straight out of the socket. It's like it's falling on deaf ears, but it's falling in open eye sockets. And these have come out underneath the fool. Now the fool is the new start. Right? It's, it's the leap, a leap of faith off into a different direction. And this is the cause of it, right? There's this eye that's looking out away from the hands. It's not, it's not paying attention to what's going on in here. It wants to be elsewhere. And then we've got communication that's falling, falling into empty space and out the other side. Yeah? It's not hitting anything of substance on the way through. It's just leaking out. We take it as it resonates to you, but <clears throat> it feels like words that once would have had some meaning no longer do, right? It's just draining out again. And the juggling, you know, of responsibilities and duties and resource management of whatever description, whether that's emotional or, or you know, pecuniary or whatever. It's all too hard. And there's a sense of wanting to strip off all the baggage, strip off all of these things, this rights, responsibility, rights, duties, responsibilities, all of that kind of thing, empty words, and spring off into the unknown on a new adventure. The card that you have in the present is the Nine of Wands. And like I said, this is a card of Sagittarius. And this is, this dude's pretty fucked up. You know, he's all bandaged, his head's bandaged, his arm's bandaged, he's hanging off that wand. And he's got these, got these wands in the background. And there are eight of those. And the Eight of Wands, which is also a Sagittarius card, talks about communication. And I feel like you, you're blocking communication like it seems like all you want to do is actually sit down you don't want to engage in this any longer it's really hanging off his wand you kind of erected this boundary this boundary is is an eight of eight of wands it's like a blocking of communication and we take it as it resonates to you but there's a boundary here <clears throat> and it feels like it's been if it's not been erected by this chap here then it's certainly being enforced by this chap here and this is in your current, your current energy. The step after the nine is the ten, and the ten of wands is when the burden becomes too much. Right, and it's usually got bloke and it's carrying loads of sticks, and it's too hard. Right, whatever benefit there was in picking up those sticks has now been is long since gone, and now it's all about burden. It's all about things weighing too much is things about costing your energy too much and this is literally the step before that right? this is having one last fight that you need to undertake before you can put the burden down somewhere he's got to find the energy from his boots he's got to pull it up and he's got to move forwards with that maybe you've made the decision to leap off into the unknown but you haven't quite managed it yet you're not quite there yet it's not the end of the cycle yet you've still got some fights left in you but you've also got some fights to undertake before you can hit that full energy the two cards that you've got to clarify are the high priestess and the king of swords now <clears throat> remember when i said that there was slightly conflicting energy right because the High Priestess, she governs secrets and the internal, right? She's very much a card of the internal. She's surpassed only by the Hanged Man in terms of passivity, right? She sees everything, she knows everything, but she does not let anything out. She doesn't volunteer that information. She certainly doesn't talk to people and tell them things. It's, it's a card of the inner world. You know, we've got the moon up there. 
right? And the moon is all about intuition. This is somebody who is driven by intuition right here. And it seems like it was your intuition that caused you to decide to start embracing this full energy and move forwards. But maybe you're a little bit stuck right now at the moment. You're not quite ready to move properly forwards. It's a really interesting card, this. She seems to be suspended in space, which I quite like. <clears throat> She's all about the intuition. She's all about trusting her gut and moving. If ever she moves, it only ever is with her gut. Now, this is somewhat at odds with the King of Swords because the King of Swords is not an intuitive leader, right? He He's air energy. So it could be an Aquarius, a Gemini or a Libra. But I don't feel like it is. I feel like it's your energy, right? This is somebody who makes plans, right? He's extremely smart he's an intelligent intelligent king <clears throat> and he puts emotion to one side he puts you know all everything apart from logic and reason to one side and he makes his decisions using only that he's a master communicator he's very good at talking he's very good at expressing himself and how you know how he sees the world and he's very much in charge There's a sense of a lower lower echo of the emperor about this one because this, there's a strategic aspect to this king, right? But he's very consumed with things that are fair, right? So maybe you are trying to work out the fairest way to do whatever it is that you're doing. But the conflict between these two Right? Wanting to move forwards, wanting to follow your gut, wanting to, to, to do what your intuition tells you you should do is conflicting with a sense of needing to do the right thing and to express yourself clearly and make yourself understood and plan and strategize. I feel like that's leaving you a bit like this. You're just like, don't know where to turn. <clears throat> because I think if the high priestess, I think... If you were following the high priestess entirely, like you would just walk away from this, whatever this situation is. But it's the fact that you're not, it's the fact that you're trying to hold these two things in balance that's leaving you a little bit battered right now. I'm trying to decide if I want to pull any more cards for that. We, oui, why not? Since we're here. Tell me more about this King of Swords, please. So the three cards that you've got are the Knight of Swords, the Nine of Wands, uh, the Nine of Swords, sorry, and the Knight of Wands. Now the Knight of Wands is you, right? That's Sagittarius right there. But then we've got the Nine of Swords to go with the Nine of Wands, right? And this Knight of Swords. There's a there's an urge, there's a desire to move forwards very fast and express yourself swiftly which you are resisting right now and then we've got the nine of swords which is about mental turmoil right? it's being you know, look at the state of this woman like you know it's things being very hard inside your head but it can be overthinking and maybe you're overthinking the situation that's possible but it's two nines 
not two tens. So you're not quite at the end yet. And then you've got this Knight of Wands here, right? Which is you. This is you wanting to gallop off and be, be your Sagittarian self. You know, this is somebody who lives in the moment, very sparky, very fiery. At the bottom of the deck now, we've got the Death card, right? That's the card of Scorpio. It's the card of endings. Leave that out, actually. <coughs> so whatever it is that you're this conflict this nine of wands state that you're in you're choosing to follow the king of swords route you're choosing to do the right thing you're choosing to be very clear and open with your expression of how you want these things done but internally it's actually mashing you up a little bit hmm. i feel you sag the final card that you've got is the hermit now that's the card of virgo in the major arcana right it's number nine but if you're not dealing with a virgo it talks about the deep introspection, right? Virgos don't need to be told how to analyse things like that. It's a natural state for them, almost to a fault sometimes. <clears throat> but it talks about being still and going within, right? It's knowing that all the answers that you seek are there inside you, right? You don't need to go looking for external answers because they're there. And to be honest, I feel like... I feel like because you're holding these two states right here. I think you probably have done a, a fair amount of going within because you've got your, what your gut wants you to do and then you've got what your brain tells you you should be doing instead. Right? So you've obviously spent some time in contemplation. It's not over. You're going to do some more. Right? There's a snake down there. Right? All about wisdom, knowledge. But he's got his, he's got his torch and he's, he's headed off to find the answers internally. <laughs> and it's clarified by judgment, which is card of Scorpio, right? And we don't need to talk about how deep Scorpios are, right? That's totally a thing. And whilst this card can sometimes talk about things coming back and second chances and, and a resurrection of, of situations that you thought you were dead, that you thought were dead. Looking at these two characters here in this card, right? One of them is all fucked up with arrows. It's been speared through, like with lots and lots of arrows. And this character behind, rather than helping up, is, is attempting to push him down further. Right? And there's an interesting symmetry here. Because the second card is the Four of Wands. And look at those flowers there on that card, right? And then look at what that person has been pushed down into. It's, they're the same flowers right there, right? It's almost like they're there and then they're really close, right? There's a sense of a fear of judgment, potentially. You know, because this this character in the foreground is wounded and this character behind them is pushing them down to the ground you know, there's there's no sense of assistance here and that feels like the weight of somebody else's judgment on you I have another card for judgment please. apparently I can have three okay four holy shit <coughs> we've got hermit at the bottom of the deck here now Uh, right, so what we've got here, right, this is the reason for you feeling judged. We've got the lovers, we've got the world, right, we've got the Ace of Pentacles, and we've got the Fool. The lovers is the card of Gemini, but it talks about making a choice, right? You feel judged for the choice that you're making right here. 
and what is the choice that you're making? It's to end a cycle and start off on a new one, right? We've got the Fool again, right? That's the second time the Fool's come out. But the Ace of Pentacles is a solid new start that's, that's tangible in the 3D right there. But from, from the end of the cycle, you go straight to the beginning of a new cycle. That's, that's how cycles work right there. And it seems you're very clear about what you want to do here. You've made that decision. You've made that choice. But somebody else has a problem with it. And I feel like you probably know who this person is. Like, this is not surprise judgment by other people. The Four of Wands talks about... It talks about home, right? Fours are all about stability and security, right? But for me, the Four of Wands, it's the Twin Flame card right there. But more than the four walls that surround you, it talks to me of those people that feel like home, you know, whoever they are to you. People, places, possibly, situations, you know. That feeling of home in here. Some more cards for the four of wands, please. <laughs> Pretty obvious card. No, it's just this one. So, a card that you got to clarify is the King of Wands. Now, that's the Fire King, so that could be you, Sagittarius. But it could be another Aries, Leo or Sagittarius in your midst. It feels like what's coming up for you is a period of introspection, possibly. Well, I mean, it might be a Virgo having a problem with this, but a period of introspection following like quite harsh judgment about the choice that you've made for yourself right here. Right? And the Four of Wands and the King of Wands, you know, man, you're stepping into your own energy, right? There's a sense of feeling repressed over here, and there's a sense of expansion out here. With the Knight of Wands as well, you know, it's a desperate to get out and do your thing. Elevating up to a king. Maybe being home to yourself, possibly. Like, we've got the sun at the bottom of the deck. Whatever this is, it's very positive for you. It's a very positive move. But it looks like it's not going to be viewed that way by other people. Is there anything else that you would like to say about the four of wands here? Please. Yeah. We've got the Seven of Cups, which is all about choices and options, usually. But this is kind of all of these things chasing, right? And of all of those characters on that card, you are this little person down here, right? It seems like you're going to feel the weight of other people's opinions on you. You're going to feel slightly hunted by it. And you're just going to sit behind the rock. Just wait for them to all run past. Yeah. We've got judgment twice here. And underneath that, we've got the five of wands, which talks about conflict, fighting, competition. And then we've got the ten of swords, which talks about endings. Yeah. It's the end of a cycle right there. Mm. Right, I don't want to kind of leave it like that because that's quite harsh. So I'll pull some more cards. In there. It seems like whatever whatever used to mean something to you doesn't mean anything to you now when you've made a decision you've made a choice but you're kind of stuck where you are for now and although you don't like it you, you're dealing with it and that's fine but what's coming up in the month of february is the weight of other people's opinions weighing in on this 
And that's going to put you into a period of introspection. Even though I feel like you know you're making the right choice, like you do know you've made the right choice. You know, there's there's the choice, and here's what you've chosen: an ending and a new beginning, right there, twice. But you are going to have to put up with, you know, being chased down for it for at least a little while. Let's get you some cards of advice. Get some advice for Sagittarius, please. Knight of Pentacles. That's the card of Virgo as well. Wait. Fucking hell. Um, we've got the Ten of Wands at the bottom of the deck now. That is the point of things being too much. You know, maybe, maybe this judgment about your decision is what's going to be able to cause you to move free. But what you've got for advice here <clears throat> is the Knight of Pentacles, the Emperor and Justice. Now, do you remember I said I thought that the, the King of Swords was like a lower echo of the Emperor? It feels like it's going to push you forwards in the month of February to make your decision, whatever this is, however this plays out right here. The Knight of Pentacles is also the card of Virgo, so that's the second Virgo we've got there. That may or may not be relevant, <clears throat> but as advice, so let's move forward slowly, right? It's not like the Knight of Wands, which is your knight, or the Knight of Swords, you know, which has come out for you as well, like wanting to charge off desperately. This is doing things methodically in a correct order, you know, and taking your time to do it. It's worth it. Because this crow here knows the value of this pentacle. Right? He knows the value of doing things properly. Of all the knights, this one's the slowest. But this one's the one that's going to get the job done. <coughs> and then we've got the emperor and justice. Right? And I hark back to the emperor because this is a step up from this. So whilst you've been working in this energy at the moment, raise your game for February. Right? You're not just a king, you're an emperor, and an emperor embodies all of the kings, right? King of Wands, which is you, which is out here already, right? Right there. The King of Swords, the King of Cups, and the King of Pentacles, right? He covers it all. But no, notice how he sat on a sword right there, right? <clears throat> Make your plans, don't be distracted. And just stay in charge of your shit, right? Don't allow yourself to be diverted in any way. And then justice, you know, which is the card of, of, of doing things the right way. It's also got a sword on it. You know, communication is going to be a really big thing for you this month, Sagittarius. But also, you know, moving forwards with truth and integrity. Say what you mean and mean what you say. And if you haven't got anything to say, then don't say it. Yeah. All right, Saji, I'm going to leave it there. Um, if the message resonated with you, I would love it if you would leave me um, a comment or, you know, a like or something like that, or even send me a message. I love reading all that sort of stuff. Um, and if you fancy subscribing, I'd love that too. Otherwise, I will see you in about a fortnight for the mid-month. Okay. Take care.